By 1965, half of the USA's population was under 25 years of age. The young men and women of the 60s had witnessed social injustices of their parents' generation and wanted change. That change was reflected in 1960s men's clothing with avant-garde styles emerging under the influence of couture and boutique designers. But what about mainstream men, the squares? Mainstream fashion was a continuation of 1950s styles, adding even more casualness, a slimming of the figure, and adding brighter colors and patterns. Mainstream men maintained two distinct wardrobes, a conservative one for business and a more expressive, colorful wardrobe for casual wear. Traditional suits are worn in conservative professions such as corporate, business, banking, law, and government. The three most common colors are shades of gray, navy blue, and brown. Many professions enforced the 1950s tradition of conformity. Single-breasted suits are the most mainstream with three buttons, the most common choice. The lapels sit at the top of the chest and lapels are very thin. Pocket squares can be worn in the upper chest suit pocket. This may match the tie or be plain white. Men who wished to be thought more fashion forward chose double-breasted suits to stand out from the crowd. The double-breasted suit was often the choice of younger men or those in creative industries. Notice this double-breasted style aligns the buttons in straight lines instead of using the slant toward the shoulders that we saw in the 1930s. Conservative trousers taper to the ankle moderately. There's a hard crease all the way up the leg. Note the men on the left wear a traditional point collar. The man in the center wears a spread collar with the points facing toward the shoulders. Outside of the office or for business casual, men could wear the latest trend for sports coats in bold patterns and contrasting colors. This look was heavily influenced by the Ivy League style that we saw in the 1950s of mismatched suit jackets and pants. Red and yellow vests appear once again as a sign of authority or gravitas. Suburban and golf versions of these Ivy League styles could be very bright and bold, as you can see on the right. The latest style of casual shirt was the pullover sweater seen on the left, made of a thin sweater-like knit fabric. There is a three-button placket at the neck and a soft knitted collar that folds down. The classic polo shirt seen on the right is short-sleeved, also with a button placket and soft fold collar. The pullover is worn completely buttoned, but the polo is worn with one button open at the neck, usually. Men dress in colors for their casual wardrobes, as they had in the 1950s, with jewel tones and pastels favorite colors. Striped polos and pullover sweaters are a signature look for men, with many now made of new synthetic fibers as a selling point. They were rugged and stood up to wear, keeping their color after repeated washings. Men dress in classic cardigan sweaters for casual attire, with conservative men choosing subdued colors and timeless knitted cable patterns. More adventurous men chose brighter colors or color-blocked cardigans, as seen on the right. In the 1960s, men begin to reject ties for business casual. And here we see two men who have filled in their open shirt collar with a neck scarf tucked under the shirt. Another solution to avoid the tie is a turtleneck or mock turtleneck. These sweaters are a very thin weight of knit under the influence of the continental look. This look is more associated with artistic or sports or entertainment personalities or those who wish to be thought like that. Men's shirts retain the established classic styling with a slimmer body conscious fit. Point collars are short and ties are thin, about two inches wide. 
The tie is worn long, just touching the top of the trouser. Shirt manufacturers introduce polyester blended with cotton to resist wrinkling and stand up to wear during the day. In 1964, the Permapress chemical additive was introduced, making the shirt much easier to care for. The white shirt is no longer the status item it once was, affordable to everyone and easier to maintain. Like so many items in the 1960s wardrobe, a man's ideology determined many of his fashion choices. Conservative men wear moderately styled trousers that sit up at the natural waist. Some men continued to wear a single pleat, popular from the 1950s. This created a bit more volume for a roomier fit. These trousers were styled with small cuffs and they just touched the top of the shoe. More fashionable men chose trousers such as those we can see in the center. The waist sits a little lower with a shorter rise as you can see in the shorter zipper length. These are flat fronts with no pleats. The leg tapers a bit more toward the ankle and the hem is a bit shorter than the ankle. Pockets in both styles slant from the waist back to the side seam. Trousers will tighten as the decade goes on, as we can see on the right. Conservative men will not adopt this body conscious fit. Men's casual wardrobes are colorful, as we can see. The advertisement at the left shows an ideal casual wardrobe for an upper middle class man for all occasions, consisting of a sport coat and sweater vest, a short zipper jacket for outdoors, a cardigan sweater, and a check pattern shirt. On the right, we see a casual wardrobe for a working man. Men's hat styles remain the same with fedoras, the favored hat. For most men, it is now a casual hat and a dress hat, with other dress hat styles dropping away from use. The fedora has a snap brim or one that can be curled up or down for personal taste. The brim is now so small, it is often called a skimpy brim. We have a new style of hat, the trilby, as you can see on the right. This has been a traditional hat worn by wealthy British men, particularly when at the horse races. It makes a comeback under the influence of London fashion in the 1960s and 70s. It is a more casual hat than the fedora, and you will often see it made in inexpensive materials such as straw, cotton, or even wool felt for winter. It resembles a fedora, but it has no dent in the sides, and the top of the hat is sunken more than the dent in a fedora. The pork pie hat remains a common style for men whose face shape calls for a shorter crown. The distinctive feature is the sculptured crown with a circular dent all the way around the top. This will be the last decade that men wear hats outside every day as part of dressing well. Fashion historians point to two factors that kills the hat. The first is more men driving in their own heated cars where they have to remove their hat for comfort. The other is a general desire to give up old traditions as younger generations define fashion and ignore the rules. The business shoe remains the same and many men will wear classic styling in an Oxford or slip-on. One new touch is reducing the size of the lacing panel, as you can see on the left, so the shoelace passes through only two or three holes. Short boots and mod boots are an option for casual wear. Mod shoes and boots feature a chunkier styling and fit with buckles and straps. Casual shoes can take on the bright colors of the rest of the man's leisure wardrobe, with all styles from the 1950s still worn, including the two tones seen on the right. Mainstream men wear their hair short, and it is a point of pride for conservative men who do not approve of younger men growing longer hair. Older men will retain the 1950s side part 
or brush their hair back to reveal the front hairline for an overtly masculine look. Younger men will adopt mod styles that brush forward to, and hide the forehead, as you can see on the right. Older men never adopt the new 1960s styling, but they will take a walk on the wild side with a new synthetic blend fabric called shark skin. It is named for the shiny synthetic look, as you can see on the left, and it contains a little bit of texture woven into the fabric. This man retains the pleats in his trousers for a very roomy fit, but his tie is slender and his lapels on the suit are small, so he has made some concessions to new fashions. The 1960s will see the last of Victorian dressing, such as the morning suit in the United States. President Kennedy was inaugurated in 1961, and he was the last president to wear the morning suit for his inauguration. We can see him on the left walking with his top hat, and on the right, a back view showing the tails of his cutaway coat. The morning suit is still worn on royal dress occasions in Britain and on some very fancy occasions in the United States. We also see the last of some other 19th century traditions in 1963 for Kennedy's funeral. His brothers wear mourning suits as a presidential funeral was deemed a formal day occasion. Mrs. Kennedy wears the full widow's veil and the two children, Caroline and John Jr., are dressed alike in matching outfits. John Jr. wears a short suit, the traditional attire for small boys, and Caroline wears a short dress. They both wear fold-over socks. This ending of Victorian rules in the United States takes the entire 1960s to achieve, with older holdouts clinging to these conservative styles well into the 1980s. The 1960s brings a new liberation to men's garments, leading to a relaxation of some traditional rules and allowing men to discover fashion again.